White motherboards are a scam. Most manufacturers just slap some white heat sinks on a black PCB and call it a day. But that isn't what Gigabyte did with the X670 Aorus Pro X, a nearly all white motherboard. So what exactly do you get from this motherboard apart from the aesthetic? Well, starting off with CPU power, here you have 16 plus 2 plus 2 phases, rated at a maximum of 70 amps. So a Gigabyte staple at this price point, and identical to the step-down X670 Aorus Elite. It's more than enough for most people, especially when combined with 248 pins for CPU power. And more than enough can also be said are the PC expansion with a primary PC Gen 5 slot and two additional physical 16x slots. The weirdly, they're both Gen 3 and one of them is actually 4x and the other 2x? I mean, there's not really too many expansion cards that are required to and exactly to PCE lanes, especially all the Gen 3 ones, so I have no idea what the point is here. And in fact, it's actually a step down from the Elite, which does have a Gen 4 slot. Plus, there's also no standalone 1X slot for 1X cards to snugly fit inside, so that is a pretty big shame. Though it is balanced out by a pretty good storage options with two Gen 5 and not 2 slots and two additional Gen 4 ones, and so good, in fact, that I can't even really be mad about it having just four SATA connectors. Finally, when it comes to rear IO, well, this is what Gigabyte always does best, plastering as many USB ports as humanly possible, with 11 USB Type A ports here in total, and an additional 20 gigabit USB Type C port as well. That is pretty insane though, strangely it's, you guessed it, once again a downgrade from the Elite, which had 12, because something else that Gigabyte is good at is making more boards that make no sense. What also makes no sense is the fact that while you do have integrated HDMI, you don't have integrated display port, but like, whatever. I don't think many people will be using it anyway. And on top of that, you also have 2.5 gig Ethernet, Wi Fi 7, which is a really nice addition, and unfortunately, cut down audio options with just three audio jacks. Which, again, while I think it's fine for most people, I kind of don't like the fact we're literally losing audio jacks compared to where we were as a society a couple of years ago. Like who cares about animals going extinct when audio jacks are going extinct, but when motherboards and on phones? I'm nitpicking at this point, okay, but I'd also say that nitpicking is something worthwhile on a motherboard that costs $300. That means you're paying a pretty hefty tax on a wide aesthetic, which sure, while pretty amazing, may not be worth it for many, especially seeing how you can get the Elite for quite a bit less for pretty much the same specs. But what it does, it does well, if you don't count all those black connectors kind of ruining the look. Though hey, with the rise of motherboards where all the connectors are on the other side, maybe that's a problem that will solve itself in due time. But in the meantime, if you want to get this motherboard, then our links to it will be down in the video description below and up in the iCards. And while it's still here, maybe we'll check out our Patreon, which is always a great deal. Plus also huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Anna Vroniak, Bartosz Roka, and all the make some the Sheen Allcroft, Lansby, and Level Up. But anyway, that's our it's, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.